ends and still going, you know. So it's an everlasting tour. It never, it's not like the big ass where they go out for two weeks or two months, and, mm. you know. So it's, it's uh, that's why, you know, but luckily Texas music is, you can do it uh, all over the world and and all year round. So I go to Japan and uh, uh, next next week, or this week, I'm saying. And uh, then uh, I go to uh, Europe in February. And uh, we're doing an interview, Larry. What was one of your uh, first uh, kind of inspirations um, mu musically? Oh, musically, it had been my dad. My dad was a picker, you know, so, uh, you know, and then his influence, his, what he liked, I liked, you know, so uh, it kind of rubbed off on me. Uh, you know, he had Letty Brazell and Buck Owens, George Jones, Hank Williams, Roy Acuff. He had all that stuff, you know, and I, I liked it. Johnny Cash, uh, Merle Haggard. So, I, and growing up, uh, when I did, I was lucky enough that when uh, the the radios, mainstream radio, was still pretty good. You know, still had uh, still had Merle on there, Johnny Cash, George Jones. So I was lucky. Enough. And uh, and do you remember your first hat ever? No matter, it's kind of. I do remember you have a my story first hat. Uh, of course, you got to remember his urban cowboy days. Uh, it was a uh, big old straw with big old ostrich feather on it, and uh, I think it was a Charlie One horse uh, back in the days. And uh, it definitely uh, it was it was what everybody was wearing at the time. And uh, I, I I remember going to uh, Manny whenever he was off at 35. Oh, so you knew Manny and you'd go in yeah. there? Yeah, that was a while back. And, uh, but it was, you know, it was still one of the kind then, you know. I mean, it's, it, it, this, this is a, this, we follow this uh, Texas Hatters Rail. Uh, any musician does, you know, it's just the best place to get a hat. <laughs> can you, Quite simply. Can you tell us what it was like going back there in the day? Uh, going, going there in the day, you know, it was, uh, yeah. that's the first time I've ever seen, uh, a hat made from scratch. Show me how you know help and everything. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun, you know. Because uh, uh, you know, up until then, I always just bought them off the rack. You know? So it, was, it, it showed me the back room there where he uh, pressed the stuff. And that was pretty, pretty impressive. You kind of saw the difference between a hat off the rack See and the difference between a hat off the rack. And, and, uh, and, uh, he showed me all the different styles he made. So uh, it was. Uh, and at the time, really, I couldn't even afford uh, a hat like that. Uh, like I could walk, I just walk out with a hat band. <laughs> how did you hear about Manny's Texas Hatters? Uh, who told you about it, or how did you come to know? Uh, I heard about uh, Texas Hatters from uh, Ray Benson. And, uh, uh, well, it's just everybody knew about uh, Texas Hatters. That's a place to go. Uh, you, you can get you can get them off the rack. There's lots of places. If you want to get a good hat. And that was one thing too, and that we we're. It's so great about these places. You, you can just walk in, and they'll show you around and tell you how it's oh, yeah. done. It's so open. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't I obviously didn't have an appointment. Just walked in. Luckily, it was one that many people in the store. And, uh, so he took the time to show me around. And now your hatter is Joel. Now Joel's my hatter. The Mad Hatter. That's <laughs> And uh, he didn't he do a special hat for uh, the musical that you were in? Joe did a special hat uh, for me. Uh, uh, the Ghost Brothers of Dark Lane County, you see. Uh, John Mellencamp, Stephen King wrote the play. John Mellencamp did the music. And uh, T Bone Burnett uh, arranged the music. And uh, it, it uh, uh, world premiered in Atlanta, which was uh, New York. And that hat, more well, likely, uh, Go again on Broadway uh, next year when it goes when it starts. Yeah, they love that hat, man. They, I was really trying to take it with me, <laughs> but they, 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 uh, it says Zydeco Cowboy on it. So it's, it's a piece of Broadway now. All right. Well, thank you very much. Really, pre you have any last questions? Uh, just, uh, you know, Texas Hatters is almost ingrained into Texas music at this point. And, oh yeah. You know, how, how did how do you think it got to that point where, I mean, did it just start with a, a few musicians who had found the place and kind of spread the word, or how did it get there? I think that musicians uh, uh, 
kind of kind of gravitate toward Texas Hatters because it's a, it's a great hat, it's a custom hat. And if you want to get something special done, that's where you go. But uh, also, Joel is a, a key ingredient here. Uh, he's he's a great dancer. He comes out and supports live music. And uh, when you get somebody like that that is, that is uh, supporting you, you, know, you tend to want to support them too. And, you, and, and like I said, musicians they like custom stuff, you know. So uh, we, uh, uh, everybody in the bands, they just and, and the dancers that dance around, they, they want to get a custom made hat. And they know that Texas Hatters is the best place. But also, uh, Joel gives to the to the music community uh, his dancing and supports the music. So and it, does, it comes back to the thing. Do you have a specific story about Joel at one of your shows by any chance? Seeing him? Uh, well, not a specific story. It seemed like it just keeps repeating itself. Uh, I, I, the thing about Joel is I, I started taking pictures of him dancing with uh, you know, beautiful women. And, and, uh, and it got to be two women at a time sometimes he was dancing with. Uh, after a while, I realized it wasn't something so special with him. He always does that. <laughs> <laughs> so he's he's a he's quite the uh, quite the, the ladies man. All right, thank you.